Hi, and welcome to this uh, lesson when we're going to be going through 20 multiple choice questions on plant transport. Now, for this unit, uh, which is module 3.3 from the OCR A-level biology syllabus, weirdly, uh, the exam board haven't published any uh, questions, but I have uh, some questions that we're going to go through. So I'm setting them for you on PowerPoint, on uh, Teams, or if you don't have access to that, what I suggest you do is just pause the video as I'm going through it. When you get to the new slide, for example, with this six questions on it, pause the video, write down your answers, and then uh, come back for the marking. Okay, so first of all, I'd suggest you do the 20 questions if you've got access to Teams. If not, we're going to get going right now. So, question one, which colour should I use today? Let's, I think I'm going to use a yellow. All right, so the Casparian strip, remember that's in the endodermis, and that is this one, okay, Subarin. Subarin, um, you remember it kind of wraps around those cells of the endodermis. The reason is it blocks the apoplast pathway. Uh, two, transpiration is the movement of what through a plant? This one is water and dissolved minerals, okay? So it's water and the minerals from the roots of the plant um, being... Uh, transported. Three, the perforated end walls in sieve tube elements are known as sieve plates. That's this one here, C. Um, yeah, sieve plates is the best one. Four, phloem tissue contains two different types of cell, sieve tube cells and companion cells, B. Okay, because remember the companion cells um, kind of keep the phloem cells alive. They do most of the metabolic activities densely packed with um, mitochondria, for example. Five, cellulose cell walls are strengthened by a polymer called lignin. Remember, the lignin is basically wood. Um, subarin is not really a strengthening one. You might have said subarin, but subarin is about um, impermeability. Um, impermeable, and that is... Um, really in the endodermis, whereas the lignin is found in the xylem, is the woody kind of part of the plant. Six, translocation is the movement of, you, you might say, sugar through a plant. So which one is kind of best, uh, best fits that? Well, it's not water and dissolved minerals. No, it's definitely not oxygen. No, definitely not carbon dioxide. It's assimilates, this one. Assimilates. Uh, what's the definition of assimilates? I'm not really sure. Um, things that the plant has assimilated. To assimilate is to, what is to assimilate? You have to look it up. I'm not really sure words fail me at the moment, but I think it means that sort of things that plants have created by assimilating carbon dioxide and water, they assimilated it together into sugar and other things, okay? Because plants make glucose in photosynthesis, but then that can be converted into sucrose, which is glucose plus fructose. We've also got things like amino acids and stuff, which the plant manufactures for itself and then it's transported around the plant in the phloem. Okay, now let's move on to these questions here. Pause if you need to do these questions. We'll come back in a sec. Okay, question seven. The bulk movement of liquid in the phloem is by mass flow. That's C. Remember, we have active loading of assimilates into the phloem at the source. Water follows by osmosis, and then we have a mass flow. Uh, to the sink where the uh, assimilates are removed. Eight, which statements describe some properties of water that are useful to plants? Hydrogen bonding makes water a polar solvent. Yeah, that is useful. It means that the, the water is the kind of medium in which chemical reactions can take place, for example, and the, me and the medium for the transport system. Cohesive forces between water molecules allow the water to move in an unbroken stream. That's very useful for the xylem. Uh, weak hydrogen bonds between water molecules attract molecules to each other and allow water molecules to move easily in relation to another. So that is about sort of viscosity, the fact that water can sort of flow. Um, oh, gosh. Now, I would have almost said, I would probably say D, okay? But, but the the place where I got this from, the the, the examiner who created this says A. I kind of disagree with that. I think that the, the fact that water can flow easily is beneficial, um, although I can see what they're sort of saying. 
Um, maybe it does water doesn't need to flow rapidly around the plant. It's quite slow flow. Um, so anyway, they're saying A. So let's go with A. Okay, A. Okay, question 9, 10, 11. If you need to do these questions, pause the video and do them now. All right, so for question nine, uh, we're looking at the cross-section of a sunflower stem. So a non-woody plant where we've got the vascular bundles in the stem, they're kind of arranged uh, around the stem in little kind of bunches. They almost look a bit like a figure eight of eight if you kind of trace the outside of them all the way around. The vascular bundle almost looks a bit like a figure eight like that. We have distinct tissues in there. So first of all, um, I always remember that the phloem is on the outer, outside and the xylem is on the inside. But there's also another tissue which is called sclerenchyma, which is sort of um, support tissue. So the support tissue is on the outside. That's this. This is the sclerenchyma, about up to there. So let's colour that in. That could. Uh, oh, sorry, that's not that one. It's tissue Y. So tissue Y is sclerenchyma. So, so far... We've kind of narrowed it down to A or D. Inside that is the phloem. I always colour in the phloem green when I'm highlighting because it reminds me that it's carrying sugar made from photosynthesis. And then, so therefore, that's X is the phloem. So it could be either of these two. So it looks like it's definitely going to be B. And the xylem is in blue. I colour it in blue anyway because it's carrying water and mineral ions from the roots. So the xylem is that one there. Now you notice I left a little bit of a gap there. So you might have said, well, what's this here? There is something in there called the cambium, which contains meristem cells, which can divide. So that's why I put that there. Okay, so which row shows the correct function for tissues X, Y, and Z? Well, tissue, let's start with X. Tissue X is the phloem. So what is the correct function of the phloem? It's organic solutes okay things assimilates remember organic solutes like sugar sugar is an organic solute so it could be c or d tissue y is to do is the sclerentium it's to do with mechanical support so it's going to be that one that uh you know it could have been that one but we've already said that a can't be right but that could have been right uh and then z is the xylem and that's water and mineral ions so it is definitely the answer is definitely c there uh, whereas this one well, here was B. Okay, this one, uh, when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, I'm not sure about this one, because this is a leaf, uh, and actually the vascular bundle in the leaf is kind of this whole area that I'm drawing this red ring around now. And I wasn't quite sure which bit was which, but actually, look, there's only one option in the vascular bundle. So um, xylem has to be B, okay, it has to be. Um, what else would, what is everything else? Just... Um, for the sake of labeling. This would be A, would be the waxy cuticle on the upper surface of the leaf. C, do you know what it is? That would be the palisade mesophyll. And if that's palisade mesophyll, what would D be? Spongy mesophyll. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight again, just with um, that sort of same color code, where the tissues would be. So this whole tissue up here in the vascular bundle would be some packaging tissue, support tissue. Um, and then we've got, this would be the xylem, carrying that water into the leaf, um, where transpiration is going to take place. All water is also needed for photosynthesis, remember? And then underneath that, this layer here would be the phloem, okay? So in the leaf, actually, physically, normally the xylem is above the phloem. Okay, now let's move on to the next set of questions. Pause if you need to do these three right now. Okay, question 12. What is a potometer actually measuring? Well, a potometer measures, you might be tempted to do this, the rate of evaporation from a plant shoot, but I mean it is, it is measuring the rate of transpiration, however if you want to be really picky, and examiners love to be picky, it's actually measuring the water uptake, isn't it? Because the water is being taken up into the stem pulling that bubble along the little tube. So the answer is B, okay? Um, this is not correct, loss in weight of a plant shoot due to transpiration, unless it's a mass potometer. And actually it's not really the loss in weight of the plant shoot, but it's more the loss in weight of the water in the beaker. And it's not translocation, it's to do with transpiration. So that's a pretty picky one, but the best answer, the best answer is B. 13, 
Here we've got a plant organ. OK, so this we can clearly hopefully recognize that this is the root. So that's B. B. Uh, let's try and keep that um, same sort of thing again. The, remember, if we were to color this in, this is the xylem here. So this, this image has obviously been taken from a different question. But D, the area D is the xylem. The area C here is the phloem. And oh, A is the endodermis all the way around here. OK, so that's the outside of the vascular bundle. And I've forgotten what C is called. You'll have to remind me. I haven't taught this for a year or so. I think B is, is it the medulla or is it the cortex? Give me a quick sec. You're probably shouting it at the screen right now, I'd imagine. But unfortunately, I can't hear you. It is the medulla. That's right. So this is the medulla. Outside of that will be the cortex. All right. 14. The figures below show a section through a dicot stem. Which of the tissues is the cortex? Uh, oh, well, we just sort of just did that, didn't we? Oh, uh, okay, but this is the stem, so D is the cortex. Yeah, D is the cortex. D. Uh, A is like that colenchyma, I think, the outer thing. And looking at this, I believe, I think C is probably xylem. That might be the, B might be the phloem there, I think. Yeah, B would be phloem. Yeah, let's just label that again, because we've got to know this sort of phloem is B. C is xylem. I imagine that, that little layer in the middle is the cambium, and this would be some sort of packaging tissue. I think it's colenchyma, like that. OK, 15. The soil water in a field where wheat was growing successfully was found, was measured and found to be minus 40 kilopascals. The most likely water potential of the cell sap could be, well, it's going to have to be lower, isn't it? Because water moves from the soil into the plant tissue. Therefore, it moves down a water potential gradient from a higher water potential to a lower water potential. So what's lower than minus 40? The only one is minus 60. If it was anything else, the plant would not survive. OK, so 15b. OK, so here we are for question 16. Pause if you need to complete this. All right, let's uh, figure it out. Let's write it out as we go. So phloem consists of two important types of cell concerned with transport, namely sieve tube elements, and the other one is companion cells. Now, there's all companion there, so all of those could still be the correct answer. Sieve tube elements are connected to each other by modified cell walls known as, and notice this is two words, so the words to go there are sieve plate, sieve plates. So, OK, now we, we've sort of narrowed it down to A or C because that's wrong and that is also wrong. These elements transport assimilates, mainly sucrose, from areas known as sources to areas known as sinks. OK, so sucrose, again, doesn't give us much there, but it's going to be one of these two sinks and therefore it has to be uh, C. Let's just check that this is correct. ATP is needed for this process, which suggests, suggests that the mechanism is active. OK, so remember, we have active loading of sucrose at the source. Water follows via osmosis. And then we can have active removal of uh, sucrose or assimilates at the sink. And again, water will leave the flow and by osmosis then. OK, moving on to question 17. This paragraph is about plants inhabiting dry areas. Some plants, such as cacti, inhibit dry areas. These plants of dry areas are known as xerophytes. Uh, reduction, this is too easy. Therefore, therefore, it's D. OK, simple. But let's keep going, just make sure, because maybe I've gone wrong. Reduction of water loss by the process of transpiration. OK, so, yeah, that's still OK. Can be achieved by applying a very variety of adaptations. In some species, the leaves are needle-like, which reduces the surface area to volume ratio. Yeah, that's all good. That one. Uh, S -A, I'll just write shorthand. S-A to V ratio. 
uh, whilst in others, the epidermis is covered by a thick layer of wax. In order to conserve the greatest amount of water, many species shut their stomata during the day. Yeah. Tick, tick. Okay, so it is definitely D. All right. Moving on. Uh, just a few more. 18. Pause if you need to do these two questions. 18. Transpiration occurs from the leaves of a plant. Which environmental conditions would produce the greatest transpiration rate? Well, okay, let's look at each one. Warm, yeah, that's good. Still air, no. Cold, no, that's not good. Still air, no, that's not good. Warm, yeah, that's good. Windy, that's good. Cold and windy, no. So this is double tick here. C, warm and windy, optim uh, most transpiration. Okay, 19. The statement below ref statements below refer to the volume movement of refer to the movement of water, excuse me, from the cortex of the root into the xylem. All right, here are the statements. So what, what are they? Are they true or false? Okay, most of the water moves across the root cortex by the apoplast pathway. That is true. Okay, apoplast is the main pathway in the cortex. At the endodermis, water has to enter the symplast pathway. That is true. Casparian strips in the dermis contain the chemical lignin. There is the mistake. That should be, what is it? Subarin, that's right. Okay, so it's going to be one and two. So the answer is therefore C. Moving on, last question. Do this question if you need to. Okay. Uh, which line in the table below correctly identifies structures J and K? Okay, well, J is uh, xylem. We know that because it's a continuous tube and it's got this spiral thickening with lignin. Only the xylem have lignin. Phloem, we can see the clear, we can see the sieve plate there and the S elements there. So this is phloem. Okay, sticking with my preferred highlighter code. Structure one is xylem and it transports water, okay, simple, and then structure two, uh, structure K is phloem, and it transports sugar, or assimilates, so the answer is therefore A, didn't like that one, the answer is therefore A, okay, all right, uh, I hope you found those questions useful, um, just one more uh, sets of these to do this week um, before I think we've almost finished the syllabus. So we're going to do some uh, mind map on disease next lesson and then some multiple choice questions on that as well. Thanks very much and I'll see you next lesson. Bye bye.